Hello guys, good evening. Welcome to my channel. So today I am here with uh, uh, day 11 of the FSSI daily quiz which is as per the new pattern of examination. So uh, previously I have completed 10 videos. So if you want to see those videos, you can um, go into my channel and uh, find the playlist uh, which I have made separately for quiz as FSSI quiz. So if you go into those uh, into that playlist, you can find the previous uh, 10 videos of quiz because uh, please uh, I will give more attention to this quiz uh, because uh, it will be very important and helpful for your exam. And one more thing, one suggestion for you all. Uh, so before uh, I give the answer, uh, try to give the answer for yourself before I if, before I tell the answer, so that it will be like a correction for you. So if you give the correct answer before I tell, then you will have a plus point that you know the all you already know the topic. So if you do, if you have given the wrong answer, then it will be a, like a attempt given by you. So you can then rectify the uh, correct answer. So now let us uh, start the first question. So recovery of penalty under FSSA, if it is not paid in cash, can be done as an arrears of. So for example, if there is any penalty you know, that has been put on a person or a food business operator, then um, if he is not able to pay in the, in the cash, then uh, in which way the recovery can be done. So it can be done in uh, one way that is called as land, land revenue. So through land revenue, the recovery of the penalty can be done. So India followed the dual mode of GST from which of the country? So uh, uh, GST was implemented very recently in 2000. Uh, so GST was uh, recently implemented in 2017, as you all know. So uh, from which country did it adopt the model? So the answer is Canada. So from the model of Canada, uh, India adopted the, uh, the uh, dual mode of GST. Now the next question is IMS stands for the full form of IMS is integrated management system. So this is a simple question. The next question is which of the following is empowered to appoint a commission to investigate the condition of socially and educationally backward classes and to recommend the steps to improve their condition. So the uh, uh, socially SEBC, SEBC. So only one authority among these four have the power to constitute a commission and to investigate the condition of a socially and educationally backward classes. So it may be, uh, they may also confuse you with economically, but it is not economically, it is only social and educational. So only the president has the power uh, to appoint a commission to look into the conditions of socially and educationally backward classes. DASH has the power for recognition and accreditation of laboratories, research, institute and referral food laboratory. So. Uh, if you if you have a food lab private food lab now you need to get accreditation from the government so that uh, uh, the FSSI sends uh, their food particles uh, for testing in, into your laboratory so that you'll get a government recognition and also gain more uh, attention towards the people since it is government uh, it is recognized by government so which of the following can give recognition for such a laboratory so the answer is food authority so food authority is the only apex body which can um, give a recognition and accreditation of laboratories research institute and referral food laboratory niti ayo can be referred to as which type of body see i will explain you the difference the constitutional body means which has been mentioned in constitution so which has been mentioned in constitution Statutory body means it is made by an act or law of a parliament. It is not mentioned in the constitution, but uh, it has been enacted by an act of parliament. For example, recently, you know that uh, the cryptocurrency bill will be introduced in the parliament. So after passing the cryptocurrency bill, it will be a crypt cryptocurrency act because uh, so hence it is a statutory law because it was not mentioned in the constitution. But since it has been passed by an act of parliament, this is called a statutory body. So non-statutory body means which has uh, not been in constitution also, not been in statutory also, by, but uh, it, can, uh, it can indirectly say that it has been passed by executive resolution. So executive resolution means the cabinet. So the cabinet takes uh, some decision and by their own they can form a body. For example, SSC. So SSC uh, Staff Selection Commission has been formed by an ex executive order. So it is neither a st statutory body nor a constitutional body. But you can see UPSC. UPSC is a constitutional body. Constitutional body because uh, UPSC has been mentioned in the constitution and uh, also the regard in the detailed information regarding UPSC has been mentioned. But SSC is a, uh, has been formed by executive resolution. So uh, after seeing at this, uh, you will have a question like uh, 
Neeti Ayog is a which kind of body? So the answer is non-statutory body. So it is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. So please remember this. It may confuse you all. Because before Neeti Ayog, Planning Commission was there. Now the Neeti Ayog has been um, uh, sub uh, Neeti Ayog substituted the Planning Commission and it is a non-statutory body. You can see it is neither a constitutional or a non-statutory body. It is a non-constitutional or extra-constitutional. So the, uh, the bodies which have been uh, uh, created uh, outside the uh, outside the part of constitution or legislation is called as extra constitutional body also. So please remember this. The next question is the dash shall have the administrative control over the officers and other employees of the food authority. So the answer is chief executive officer. So CEO will be having the uh, executive authority or all the staff under him. The provision relating to reservation of seats in panchayats for the scheduled caste is not applicable to which of the following states. So the Reservation of seats in Panchayat for SC uh, is not applicable to each of the following states. The answer is Arunachal Pradesh. So this is because um, the representation of uh, scheduled caste uh, in Arunachal Pradesh is very less because most of them are scheduled tribes there. So which of the following is the largest archipelago in the world? So archipelago means group of islands. You can see there will be so many islands in, uh, in parallel or in a straight line like this. You can see in Andaman and Nicobar also, uh, in the larger map you can see this is Andaman and Nicobar but actually that is not the truth. You can see Andaman is divided into so many parts and also Nicobar. So there are very different uh, islands which are present in a group. So this uh, a group of island is called as archipelago. So the question is which of the following is the largest archipelago in the world? So the answer is Indonesia. So Indonesia is the largest archipelago in the whole world. So these are the today's question guys. So that's all for today. So if you like it, please like it and share it with your friends and uh, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.